This is the Sawtooth Mountains of central Idaho. Uh, this is Redfish Canyon with Redfish Lake way down there in the background. And we've just topped out uh, one of the classic rock climbs in the Sawtooth called uh, Mountaineer's Route on the Elephant's Perch, which is a large buttress, kind of a big face. Here's my climbing buddy and rope gun, JP. Uh, but we're near the top of the Elephant's Perch here, and this is a good place to discuss uh, the, the Sawtooth Mountains and the rocks and kind of their geologic history. And so this is all granite, as most people know, but it's very different from the granite that occupies most of central Idaho. Most of the Idaho we see in central Idaho um, is part of what's called the Idaho Batholith. It's a much bigger expanse of granite that formed when magma cooled and crystallized deep underground. And it's much older than this granite. It's Cretaceous in age, so it's anywhere from like 80 to 100 million years old. And all that granite formed at a time when Idaho was within a few hundred miles of the west coast and a large ocean plate subducting or being shoved underneath the North American plate created the situation where magma could be generated, rise to the surface, and feed volcanoes. Very similar to what we have today with the, with the Cascade Mountains or other similar mountains like up in uh, Alaska and the Aleutians or Indonesia, places like that. So what makes these rocks a little bit different is they're much younger. They're from the Eocene period, and so they're about 50 or so million years old. Um, and rather than being directly related to subduction, they kind of have a little bit different history to them. One And one of the big things about the sawtooth granite, this 50 million year old granite, is it did form by subduction, but it was as the plate boundary was changing, that downgoing subducting plate was actually moving back towards the coastline. It's what we call slab rollback. So if you can kind of imagine that subduction zone and that downgoing plate, shifting from the position it had been in for quite a while, shifting to the west and towards the west coast. In the process of doing it, it created conditions uh, in the Pacific Northwest where the crust was thinned by extension. So as the crust on the, on the above, above the subducting plate was actually stretched east to west, that triggered the generation of magma. And that magma rose not just here in Idaho, but in parts of Washington, Oregon, and up into British Columbia. Um, and what's interesting about the the eocene in that period of magma generation is we still have the volcanic products as well and so here in the sawtooth we're looking at the plumbing systems the the magma chambers that fed the volcanic vents that would have been above them but if you go uh, further to the east or even to the south towards uh, Ketchum and Sun Valley, you can see volcanic rocks that are the same age as the sawtooth granite that are that were the surface product. So you see lava flows, ash deposits, um, and other surface-related volcanic features that kind of tie into this story. So the sawtooth granite here would have formed miles below the surface, feeding these volcanoes. And so if we roll the tape forward a little bit to maybe the last maybe like 10 or so million years, this whole range gets uplifted by a large normal fault that runs more or less north-south on the east side of the sawtooth range. And that's what's actually pushed the sawtooths up to these really lofty heights and kind of made them such an iconic range uh, in Idaho. Um, that same fault system goes further to the north. And then, as many people know, uh, in 2020, on March 31st, we had a good sized earthquake in this part of Idaho. It was a 6.5 quake. Um, and that appears to maybe have been on a northern extension of that same fault system. Uh, it's a little bit unclear exactly what fault produced that earthquake. But the point is that this area is still seismically active. And so you have this grand. Uh, scenic mountain range here in the sawtooth the the big sculptor of this landscape over the last few maybe a million or so years but definitely within the last few tens of thousands of years has been glaciers if we kind of look down into the valley here we can see that redfish canyon is this large kind of u-shape uh, and so this thing was once the site of a large glacier that moved down the valley and out into the, the valley floor out there where the Salmon River sits. Um, and so the glacier was here. We don't know exactly how high the glacier extended up the slopes, but it probably extended at least halfway uh, 
up the up the walls there, up the sides of the canyon. Uh, and then of course the climate shifted, things warmed up, the glaciers melted, and now we have streams in here. And today in the Sawtooth, maybe the biggest landscape modifier, if you will, are the rockfall events that we get pretty frequently here. So a lot of those white slopes, uh, those sort of shoots and those talus fields over there are the product of rockfall events, maybe triggered by an earthquake like the one we had last year or the freeze-thaw cycle we get in these rocks. This area gets a lot of snow, that water seeps into the cracks in the rock, it freezes, it thaws, and that expansion process dislodges the granite. In addition, the granitic rock, uh, once the glaciers moved away, the pressure of the glacial ice was removed from the rock, and so this rock's actually expanding outwards. It's, it's exfoliating, um, and you can kind of see that over here on these slabs just to the east. You can kind of see some of these uh, parallel sets of fractures or cracks sort of running through it. So over time, the granite itself wants to kind of fracture and break down and exfoliate. And then you add the frost wedging and, and the ice and some of the things going on there um, and the steep topography, and you end up with a really dynamic environment. And so you get these big rocks like we're standing on here that are obviously the product of rock fall from some of these big buttresses. And you can kind of just imagine over time these things just teeter closer and closer to the edge until they kind of collapse into the valley floor below. So great scenic view here along near the crest of the Sawtooth Mountains uh, on a great day in October.